Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, in just over a day, global players are going to be getting the Extreme Z Awakening for Tech Masked Saiyan, as well as the long overdue Dokkan Awakenings for Fizz Mira, Tech Toa, and Int Demigra. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know about these Awakenings to uh, get you guys fully prepared. Okay, so... Uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And we're starting here with the Mass Saiyan. And instead of talking about his details first, let's pop over to his Extreme Z battle event and see what that looks like. So as you guys can see, this event originally came out on JP on November 5th, 2020. And it's coming out on Global on February 9th, 2021. And the weakness is the Revenge category, of course led by the AGL transforming Bardock. So, as you make your way through the stages now, you're getting some Extreme Z Awakening medals for Mass Saiyan, you're getting some uh, tech orbs of each size, one Dragonstone per stage, and also some tech orbs, or sorry, tech Kai's along the way. And of course, he will have his natural damage reduction for every stage, but after level 3, he's gonna have additional damage reduction of 60% against all extreme type units. So obviously, you will want to bring a fully super type team, if possible. And then, after level 9, characters that are SSR or lower rarity only cause less than 2 million damage. And then from level 12 and beyond, he gets additional damage reduction of 70% against STR types and extreme types. And then after level 19, he gets additional damage reduction of 80% against STR Fizz and extreme types, and that pretty much does it for the damage reduction. So basically, when you're building a team, you want to bring as many revenge category units as possible, and you want to stay away from bringing any STR, Fizz, or extreme type units, because obviously, with 80% additional damage reduction, any units that fall into this group will barely be doing any damage. So yeah, bring a revenge team if you can, but if you don't have a lot of revenge units, then you could also do a good super int team as well. And once you do all 30 stages, or the first 30 stages, you'll be able to get all the Extreme Z Awakening medals to fully easy A the Mass Saiyan. You'll get enough tech orbs to rainbow a tech unit, 11 tech Grand Kai's, and also 30 Dragon Stones. On top of that, there are gonna be a few missions, so you get one stone for winning the Extreme Z battle within one minute and 10 seconds at level 10 or higher, two more stones, for winning the Extreme Z battle within 2 minutes at level 20 or higher, and then one more stone for winning level 20 or higher with a character from the revenge category on your team. So in total, you can expect to get 34 Dragon Stones for completing this whole thing. And here's a quick look at the revenge category. As you guys can see, there are quite a few um, int units, right? But obviously you don't want to bring the extreme one since he does have that additional damage reduction. So some good options could be Super Saiyan 3 Bardock, the Easy A Trunks, Easy A Ultimate Gohan, the Free to Play Ultimate Gohan, Boda Magetta, Android 16, and so on and so forth. If you don't have a lot of the uh, Int ones, then the Tech ones should also be okay since he doesn't have any damage reduction or additional damage reduction against Tech units. Okay, so uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it for the Extreme Z Battle event. Now let's talk about what the Extreme Z Awakening actually looks like. So for comparison, we're going to go over the pre-Awakening, the pre-EZA details first, and then talk about the EZA details. So his current leader skill is all types keep plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, super attack, immense damage, and lowers attack and defense, and passive is attack plus 50,000, defense plus 20,000 when facing 2 or less enemies. With his EZA, his new leader skill is all types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 80,000, or sorry, no, uh, 80%, and then his super attack raises attack and defense, infinitely stacking, causes immense damage, and lowers attack and defense, and his passive is attack and defense plus 100% plus an additional key plus 1, and attack plus 50% when facing 2 or less enemies, plus an additional key plus 1, and attack and defense plus 30% when facing only one enemy. So essentially when he's facing one enemy, he gets key plus 2, attack plus 180%, and defense plus 130%. When you're facing two enemies, he's getting key plus 1, attack plus 150%, and defense 
plus 100%. Overall, just the fact that they changed his buffs from flat boosts to percentage boosts makes a huge, huge difference. And for longer events, he's going to be stacking attack and defense every single turn. So he's going to be getting a ton more attack and a ton more defense over the course of the event. And yeah, all I can really say is that Bandai or Akatsuki did a really good job with his Extreme Z Awakening. I like what they did with his super attack. I like his passive. I like his uh, leader skill. Even though it's not the best, it's still usable for um, events like Battlefield. And of course, with the EZA, his stats get much better too. So when Rainbowed and Fully Extreme Z Awakened, he's gonna have 17,976 attack, 17,896 HP, and 10,457 defense. So that is the EZA Mass Saiyan. Super excited for this guy. Now moving on to the Fizz Mira, who originally came out in February of 2016 on JP, July of 2016 on Global, and now it's February of 2021 and we're finally getting his Doken Awakening. And uh, with the Doken Awakening, he does have the transformation into Final Form Mira as well. So leader skill is Fizz types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%, super attack raises attack and defense, infinitely stacking as well causes supreme damage, and passive is attack and defense plus 100% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 30% when there are only extreme class allies attacking the same turn. Key plus 1 with each super attack performed up to 3, and absorption when conditions are met, and that's when he transforms into final form Mira. So he absorbs Toa and Toki Toki's egg when HP is 60% or less starting from the 4th turn from start of battle. His links are Android Assault, Demonic Power, Tough as Nails, Kamehameha, Fear and Faith, Xenoverse, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Resurrected Warriors, Androids, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, Artificial Life Forms, Kamehameha, Power Absorption, and Crossover. Now, moving on to the Final Form Mira, his super attack raises attack and causes supreme damage, and his passive is attack and defense plus 120%. When performing a super attack, medium chance of launching an additional super attack, which is a 30% chance, yes, 30%, plus an additional key plus 3, an attack plus 30%, when there are only extreme class allies attacking the same turn, plus an additional attack and defense plus 5% per extreme class ally on the team. And he also gets a new link, which is Nightmare. And finally, his boosts are calculated separately for a total boost of attack plus 200, and 63% and defense plus 197% when all conditions are met. So that is the Mira for you. Very good Doken Awakening. And uh, even though it's super, super delayed, there's a reason why I keep saying, man, it's not a bad thing. When units like the uh, STR Metarildo or STR uh, Future Trunks don't have their Doken Awakenings yet, because the longer they make us wait, the better these awakenings will be when it eventually happens. And obviously, it will happen at some point. We just gotta be patient, right? So, uh, yeah, now let's move on to the tech Toa. And this is her token awakening. And her leader skill with the awakening is gonna be attack and defense plus 15% per key sphere obtained and recovers 1000 HP per key sphere of character's type gain. So, obviously, a bit of a unique leader skill. Um, she's got that nuking aspect, but also a little bit of recovery. I don't see a lot of people using her as a leader, unless we get another one of those, like, you know, 200% combat simulation things, where they ban Candy Vegito, so then maybe people will have to use her. But uh, for the most part, yeah, she's not going to be a great leader. Her super attack causes supreme damage and greatly lowers defense and seals super attack. And her passive is all allies key plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 5% for all allies per extreme class ally on the team. So essentially, if you have, you know, a full extreme team, that's going to be 7 times 5, 35% attack and defense for everyone. If you have 6 extreme, it's going to be 30%, 5 is going to be 25%, and so on and so forth. I'm sure you guys get the point. And she also gets attack and defense plus 100%. When there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. Her links are Demonic Power, Battlefield Diva, Solid Support, Scientist, Fear and Faith, Xenoverse, and Fierce Battle. 
and categories are Peppy Gals, Time Traveler, Siblings Bond, Battle of Wits, and Crossover. So yeah, once again, we are continuing that trend of, you know, Toa units being just very good extreme class supports, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, she reminds me a lot of like, the uh, AGL West Supreme Kai, where she gets a little bit of attack and defense for herself, so she can still do some damage and tank a bit, but her main use is still as a support unit, and if you have a full extreme team, then she is an extremely good extreme support, right? So that's the Toa, and finally, let's quickly talk about the Int Demigra, whose main use before the Zoken Awakening was just to be a stunner, right? Like he had a rare chance to stun on his super attack, he had a high chance to stun on his passive, but that's it. Now his Doken Awakening continues that trend, but he also gives you a lot more on top of that. So his uh, leader skill is all typed, key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 70%, super attack, supreme damage, with a medium chance of stunning the enemy, and his passive is attack and defense plus 120%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 60% when there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. High chance of stunning the attacked enemy and turns into giant form when conditions are met. And he has a high chance of turning into giant form when HP is 60% or less once only. His links are godly power, big bad bosses, brainiacs, revival, fear and faith, xenoverse, and fierce battle. And categories are Realm of Gods, Resurrected Warriors, Giant Form, Time Travelers, Final Trump Card, and Crossover. And in terms of his stun chance, he actually has an average chance of 65% to stun the attacked enemy with a super attack when you factor in his passive and also his super attack, right? So uh, yeah, still a great stunner, it's just now he actually has, you know, attack and defense on top of that. And uh, for the... Uh, giant form or final form Demigra. It's basically just like any other giant form or great ape transformation. He causes destructive damage with a rare chance of stunning. He gets key plus one as his passive, and uh, he also has, you know, really high stats for that one turn, and you're immortal while he's in this state. But I believe it only lasts for one turn, and then you go back to the uh, regular Demigra. And that does it for the uh, upcoming Dokken Awakenings for the Xenoverse characters on Global, as well as the Extreme Z Awakening for Mask Saiyan. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about them. Are you excited for the Mask Saiyan EZA or the Awakenings for the other three characters? And uh, hopefully this video helped you guys at least a little bit in building a team or forming a strategy for the Mask Saiyan Extreme Z area event, or rather the uh, Extreme Z battle event. Here's another quick look at the revenge category. Of course, the best leader is the AGL Bardock, but he could use just a really good um, super int team, and that should also do the job, especially if you bring a lot of super type um, revenge int units, right? So uh, yeah, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Video, signing out.